Some final instructions before the dive. How do the nets look? Dozens of old fishing nets are caught on a shipwreck off Lithuania's coast. Sabina Kakao and her crew are going to bring them up. Kakao is a pharmacist and one of Germany's most experienced divers. In 2016, she noticed a particular kind of waste in the Baltic Sea, old trawling and fishing nets. A study revealed that thousands of nets are lost in the Baltic every year. Europa. Europe has to lay the foundation for plastic to be prohibited as far as possible. Ten percent of the plastic trash in the seas consists of ghost nets. And when they degrade, they release microplastics in vast quantities. Every year, Kerkau and her fellow divers set out from Lithuania to bring up the ghost nets on a voluntary basis. They finance their operations mostly out of their own pockets. Once at the wreck, the divers find no shortage of nets. To marine animals, they're deadly traps. Kerkau and the other divers try to cut the net away with simple knives, but make no headway. Eventually, they abandon the operation. Some of these nets are decades old and aren't about to give up easily. They're made of all kinds of materials, and they're all different ages. Besides, these are enormous and very, very heavy. Heavy from the lead, water, and sand, and everything that's been washed into them over the decades. We have to cut them up into little pieces to bring them up to the surface. But what now? The nets are already piling up in many ports such as Simrisham in the south of Sweden. Here, as part of a Baltic-wide pilot project, Vesa Chernai from the Port Authority is looking for ecological solutions for disposing of the waste. Uh, the plastic industry will not be able to use this as a material, raw, raw, material, raw material, because it's too mixed of different type of plastics, and they want to have very clean raw material. But now, the tons of waste can be offloaded in Simrisham and taken to a recycling facility for old fishing nets on Sweden's west coast. Here, employees painstakingly cut apart the tangled nets. The various materials are then separated and recycled, each in the appropriate fashion. Because it's still good quality, but it's not good enough for fishing, but it could be good enough for a uh, beach bag. The process of turning old fishing nets into beach bags is complicated. Sabina Kerkau's team has finally succeeded in bringing parts of the enormous trawling net to the surface. But they still have to heave it aboard their boat. For us as a group, we've achieved fabulous success and I'm overjoyed. I think it's wonderful that we've managed to get this done and that everybody worked together so well. Let's keep it up. They all agree that many more people, and especially governments, will have to join in their battle against the ghost nets. A few countries, at least, want to introduce a tagging system for fishing nets, so in future, their owners can be traced. Sabina Kerkau sees it as a first step. If we can prevent five to 10,000 nets getting lost again this year, then we'll only have to worry about the ones already underwater. And we won't have to worry that for every net we bring up, a hundred more are being discarded. Sabina Kerkau cares about the Baltic Sea. She'll soon be back. She says the battle against the ghost nets has just begun, here in the Baltic Sea and all around the world.